Hello everybody, my name is Mariko, and today we're going to be talking about the Minecon Live event that happened yesterday. I'm mostly going to be focused on the future updates coming to Minecraft itself and what we can expect from those, but at the end I will briefly cover all of the big announcements they made. So let's start off with the biome vote. Much like last year's event, this year we had a community vote on which one of three biomes should be updated first. If you don't keep up with things in the community, the idea was that we were presented with three sets of updates, each corresponding to a specific biome. This time, the choices were Badlands, Swamp, and Mountains. For the Badlands, the features were Tumbleweeds, a new type of flowering cactus, and Vultures. For Swamps, it was boats with chests in them, frogs, and mangrove trees. And Mountains were a little more ambiguous. That one was for Goats a new type of snow, which looks like you can sink into it maybe, and a revamp of the terrain of the biome itself. Now we don't know exactly what that will look like, but Jeb described it as having a more quote-unquote majestic feel and having more dramatic views. Personally, I was rooting for swamps, but the winner ended up being mountains. So within the next update or two, we should be seeing the features of that choice added to the game. Keep in mind that that does not mean that the other options are gone, just that they will be added later on. They've also confirmed that this is still true of the losing biomes from the last Minecon event. So last year, the Taiga won the vote, resulting in berries, foxes, and campfires being added, but the baobab trees, termites, and ostriches of the savanna, as well as the palm trees and meerkats of the desert, will still be coming to the game. As for exactly which version any of these things will be implemented, well, we still don't know for sure. During the Minecon event, they actually talked about two different updates, both 1.15 and 1.16, and they never specifically said which one would see any of these biome changes being added to it. What we do know is that 1.15 should be out within this year, and 1.16 will follow it in 2020, presumably sometime in spring to early summer. So what's coming in these updates? Well, for 1.15, we didn't really learn that much that we didn't already know from the snapshots. 1.15 is likely to be a fairly small update, as its main focus is on fixing bugs and getting closer to feature parity between the different versions of the game. But of course, it does also include the new bees as well. If you follow the snapshots, then you probably know most of what was shown about bees during the event. But for those that don't, very briefly, bees are a new neutral mob. They will fly around looking for flowers to get nectar from, and in the process will get themselves covered in pollen. They will then start to fly back towards their nest or hive, dropping pollen beneath them along the way, which will cause plants and crops to periodically grow faster. Eventually their nest or hive will be full of honey, which players can then steal, but doing so will anger the bees and cause them to attack you. This will not only poison you for a bit, but will also result in the bees' death, just like in real life. You could use that stolen honey to remove the poison, but you could also just calm the bees down first by placing a campfire beneath their nest before you take anything from it, resulting in them not attacking you in the first place. I know that was very fast, apologies if you aren't up to speed on the snapshots, but none of that was actually new information from Minecon. There are a couple new things we did see relating to the bees though. One was a single unmentioned screenshot showing what appears to be a honeycomb block of some kind, which so far is not available in game. They never actually talked about it, so we don't know anything about it yet, but there is another block that they did give us some details on. That is the honey block, and this one is very interesting. So the honey block is pretty similar to the slime block, but you can't run on it, and you can't even jump up a single block while standing on it. It might reduce your fall damage like slime does, but it most likely won't be bouncing you. The interesting thing about it is that it's sticky in ways that the slime blocks are not. For example, a player that runs into the sides of these blocks will stick to it and slowly slide down, sort of like a one-way ladder. These blocks can also be pushed by pistons, and it was mentioned that entities on the block will move along with it. I'm not sure if that includes entities touching the sides of the block or not, or if it's just the ones on top and it'll make moving entities around more consistent, we'll just have to wait and see. There is one other really noteworthy thing though, and that's the interaction it has with moving other blocks. Much like slime blocks, these can be used to move large groups of blocks all at once. In the example, we saw a single piston move 6 honey blocks, 2 stairs, and 2 diorite blocks. However, it behaved in a way different to slime blocks. 
If you watch carefully, you'll notice that the honey blocks never attach to the upper platform of diorite, even though they were raised and lowered. If they behaved like slime blocks, they either would have pulled those blocks down along with them, or the honey would have gotten stuck when raised up. Unfortunately, this is not quite enough to know exactly how they work. It could be that only blocks that are deliberately placed against a honey block will attach to it, which would be absolutely amazing, but there are a couple other options as well. I guess we'll just have to wait for them to show up in a snapshot to know for sure, but right now these are looking like they could be a big deal for redstone. So that's all we learned about 1.15 during this event, but they did also reveal the theme for the following updates, 1.16. That theme is the Nether update. This is definitely one of the updates that we've been in dire need of, and it's already looking pretty good. Their focus seems to be to make the Nether as a whole more interesting, while also making it more practical for a player to actually stay there if they wanted to. A small example of this is making it possible to actually set your spawn in the nether, but there are some much, much bigger changes than that. For example, adding biomes to the nether. They've only shown us two of them so far, and they did mention that there will be more, but even just the two we've seen already are pretty cool. The first was the Soul Sand Valley, a somewhat eerie feeling biome made entirely of soul sand that turns the nether fog blue and has blue fires. These blue fires are actually a new property of soul sand itself. From this update forward, lighting a fire on soul sand will give you one of these blue flames. Of course, there's also these giant fossils spread around, but if you look closely, there's actually a couple other new features hidden in there as well. One is a new variant of soul sand with more of a wavy, sand-like texture to it spread in large chunks across the biome. It's hard to say what this new variant is yet, maybe it's just a second texture for the sake of breaking up this biome, we'll have to wait and see. Looking carefully at the columns, those are also made up of a brand new block. This one looks to be a stone variant of some kind, wouldn't be surprised if it was just called soul stone, and again this could have special properties or uses, but for now we just know that it exists. The next biome we were shown is the Nether Wart Forest, and this one actually comes in two distinct variants, a red version and a blue version. The red version feels somewhat ominous, with orange particles swirling all over the place and these strange red trees. The canopy of these appears to literally be made of Nether Wart blocks, while the trunks are an entirely new type of block with an animated texture that does look pretty cool. It would be really cool if these were treated like a new type of wood that could be converted into different blocks. There's plenty of unique stuff on the ground level as well, including the ground itself. You'll notice it has a strange growth on it, something almost like a type of mycelium growing on top of the nether rack. And on top of that we also have this new red grass looking block, as well as two new types of mushrooms. A red one and a blue one, both with orange spots. Going to the blue version, this one feels more… mystical almost, largely because the color feels so strange within the nether and the slow falling particles throughout the biome just kind of give that vibe. All of the red blocks of the trees have been replaced with these unique blue versions, as has the ground texture. You may also have noticed in both of these variants that the trees have these orangish yellow blocks in them. Those were never actually mentioned and we don't really know what they are. They're distinct from glowstone, though they do appear to be emitting light. This may just be a new light source, or maybe it's some kind of magical mushroom fruit. Again, we have very little to go on. So that's all we know about the new nether biome so far. I do want to quickly mention one thing that's happening in the snapshots though, and that's that biomes can now be changed by height. So previously, if you were standing in one spot, you would be in the same biome whether you were at Y0 or Y255 but now they can change these biomes based on height. That means that while you're traversing the nether, you'll probably see these different biomes showing up at different levels, creating a really cool and diverse effect. It's also probably a good sign for a future cave update, but we'll talk about that when the time comes. Now of course, it's not only biomes getting changed, there are some new mobs as well. In fact, one of those new mobs has even caused a name change on an existing mob. The zombie pigmen will now be called a zombified piglin, though I suspect most of us will still just call them a zombie pigman. But the reason for this is a brand new mob called a piglin. Surprisingly enough, these floppy-eared pig people are even more hostile than their undead counterparts and will attack players and certain mobs as well. They're plenty dangerous too, able to wield not only golden swords but crossbows as well. 
They also love gold, going so far as to have stashes of everything gold in chests, and they'll even be neutral around a player who's wearing golden armor. That is, unless you open their stash chest and snoop on their gold. They don't like that very much. They also have another unique trait in bartering. This isn't quite like trading, given the piglins aren't particularly friendly and there isn't any GUI for it. Instead, you'll throw some gold towards a piglin and they'll throw something back in trade. We don't really know what that's going to be just yet, but it was said that it will be something new or unique. The piglin isn't the only new mob though, there's also something a bit more… feral. Currently this mob is referred to as the Piglin Beast, though the community is currently suggesting new names for it. My vote is for Warthog, personally. These are large, boar-like creatures that are hostile, though they don't seem particularly strong, at least for now. Notably, these guys are a source of decent food, something that is generally pretty elusive while in the nether. It was also mentioned in an article on Minecraft.net that these could be bred somehow. If that's not a mistake, then it's pretty interesting given the logistics of breeding hostile creatures. Unfortunately, that's about all we know so far about the updates to the Nether, though of course we're still quite a ways out before we even start seeing features for that update. There was one other feature shown for this update though, unrelated to the Nether itself, and that is the target block. This block looks like an archery target and will output a redstone signal when it's hit with an arrow. More specifically, it will output a stronger signal the closer you are to hitting the center of the target. Not a huge deal, but a pretty neat block to have for minigames or secret base entrances. As far as gameplay changes go, that's about all we were given. There was some mention in the Q&A of getting the Illusioner into the game properly, most likely by adding it to the raids, so that will probably happen within the next version or two as well. Pretty much everything else revealed during the event doesn't relate to gameplay itself, but they did still show off a lot of other cool stuff. One such thing is the character creator they're making for the Bedrock Edition and Minecraft Earth, which essentially allows you to build your own unique skins using a bunch of preset pieces. What makes this cool is that it includes a lot of things like robot arms or animated textures, things that aren't possible with normal Minecraft skins. I would love to see the capability to make things like this for our skins in the Java edition. They also announced Realms Plus, essentially it's just an upgrade to Minecraft Realms with extra content brought in from the marketplace, so you get a bunch of things like unique maps or mini games that you can load up whenever you want to, and those come free each month with your Realm subscription, if you're into that kind of thing. Much more interesting to me was the Windows 10 ray tracing segment. You may have seen clips of this a couple months back, but essentially, in a partnership with NVIDIA, they're creating an update for the Windows 10 edition that takes advantage of NVIDIA's latest technology. At the very least, you've probably seen some RTX off and on memes at some point, and it's basically that. It's like having some extraordinarily impressive shaders on, but likely a bit less of a performance hit than it takes to do that on Java. There was actually a shocking amount of stuff beyond regular Minecraft revealed here as well, starting with Minecraft Earth. If you're not familiar with it, this is the mobile AR app that's been in testing recently that allows you to go on adventures and build things out in the real world using your phone. It may not be for everyone, but it's definitely interesting and that is going into early access phase this October, so sometime within this next month. They also revealed a whole lot more about Minecraft Dungeons, their classic dungeon crawler inspired game that we really haven't known much about until now. We not only saw the intro cinematic, but more importantly a good chunk of the gameplay during this event. I think it's looking pretty good actually, certainly not a genre I've been big on, but it looks good enough that I'll likely check it out. We should be able to get our hands on that mid-2020. The new game reveals didn't stop there though, they even revealed a brand new Minecraft themed board game during this event called Builders and Biomes. We don't really know very much about this other than a fairly cheesy video that was made, though I've seen comments from people in Mojang that have tried it and said it was fun, so take that how you will. If you're interested in getting this, it will likely be out within the next couple months, definitely in time for the holidays I am sure. And last, but certainly not least, they announced something pretty surprising. They announced an event called Minecraft Festival, a three day long real life event taking place in Orlando, Florida from September 25th through the 27th of 2020, including exhibits, tournaments, panels, you name it. 
sounds just a little bit like the old Minecon events that everyone wanted back. And they're still going to continue the Minecon live events as well, they're just going to wrap it into the festival event itself. As far as I know, there's no words yet on whether there will be capes for attending or not. I know a lot of people wanted those back, but I'm sure we'll know closer to the event happening. And with that, I do believe we are done. That is everything they revealed at Minecon Live 2019. I will have a few links in the description to things like the VOD of the events or a few other relevant things like the festival, so be sure to check that out if you're curious about something and want to check into things yourself. One final thing before I go, to those of you who are, or at least were, regular viewers of mine, I know I've been gone for a long time. So, still been pretty tough with the whole video thing recently, but I'm trying to get a couple one-off videos done at the moment, and hopefully resume my series in a pretty big way. So, if there's even a single one of you left, thank you for your patience, you are amazing, and hopefully I can repay you for that properly in the near future. Anyway, with that out of the way, I think we're good. So, thank you all for watching, I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you guys next time.